entry management and uh, this 1.4 the last lecture of uh, this uh, training session is all about the uh, CSE work hazards and controls and I would say the most important one because uh, ultimately uh, what is more important is the moment we are going to work in a confined space the much much important thing is to identify the hazards and implement uh, some productive controls you know before even we start our project and uh, work safely like before during and after and we all know any process in the world have three stages like before during and after so uh, for all three stages we must uh, follow safety rules and regulations especially for confined space uh, entry management now the confined space hazards uh, we can prepare a very quick list but uh, uh, just few of them we can highlight here what are the confined space hazards the number one is the engulfment like the entry points because of any reason is blocked actually or maybe the engulfment means uh, the confined space is uh, buried because of uh, uh, any other, it could be water, it could be sand, it could be collapse, you know, whatsoever the reason is. But that entry point is uh, fully incurred and even the people inside, they are stuck, they are unable to come out because of, uh, because of engulfment. That is why this hazard has to be taken seriously. Then another one is uh, temperature, but extreme temperatures, uh, electrical hazard could also be there. And we truly have to bear in mind the mechanical hazards as well, noise, especially if the noise level is above than 85 decibel. And slip, strips and fall, and fall still is the number one cause of fatalities globally. I repeat again, fall is still the number one cause of fatalities globally you know so that's why slip slips and fall should be taken so much seriously and uh, poor lighting of course you know it's another hazard and atmospheric uh, maybe hazardous atmospheric hazards like toxic fumes toxic gases and uh, especially H2S, carbon monoxide, LEL could be above than 0% if hot work is there or maybe above than 5% if cold work is there and 5 to 10% of course, you know, you need some scrub and above than 10% LEL or a, we should not even recommend for cold work as well. So plenty of rules are there, we will definitely discuss uh, within this chapter, you know. External activities should also be observed more closely like especially heavy equipment or exhaust fumes now oxygen deficient atmosphere but uh, bear in mind as per osha below 19.5 percent or as per saudi Aramco, uh below 20 percent would be considered oxygen deficiency you know in the atmosphere and on the other side oxygen enrichment could be another hazard or uh, and this uh, deficiency maybe because of uh, consumption maybe because of uh, displacement because if other toxic gases are there so oxygen which will will be displaced you know so flammable atmosphere uh, because of hydrocarbons or uh, byproduct of work now the toxic uh, atmosphere hydrogen sulfide h2s so especially if H2S is 10 ppm or above ideal is 0 ppm is the ideal one but below 10 ppm 8 hours uh, you know uh, TLV is there threshold limit value that means we can work without scrubber for 8 hours but still as a safety trainer uh, I truly recommend you know the person to person because the health level is uh, different everyone is not having similar or uh, same level of uh, health you know so we should uh, definitely do further analysis either to allow a person to continue to work or but ultimately uh, some rules are very clear that every after every two hours since you need to take gas testing so you have to come out it's not like continuously allowing someone to work in a toxic environment you know carbon monoxide 
uh, ideal again zero but uh, below 35 ppm we can work eight hours but uh, uh, 35 to 1000 ppm we need cover we need some uh, further precautions to be taken and approvals as well and above then 1000 ppm to onward even no entry and same way the radioactive material norm naturally occurring radioactive material i'm talking about and that should also be uh, considered as a hazard and mercury especially found in crude refining vessels now some of the external hazards we can also discuss here like such as uh, you know the combustion engines we are using generators and they also create uh, certain fumes because once petrol and diesel the moment they burn of course we get uh, carbon monoxide right equipment opening line break other line opening activity could also be happening nearby so uh, that uh, process or activity should also be considered an external hazard and hydrocarbon sampling would also be going on so in that sense uh, we we must not ignore that hazard also loading and unloading operations uh, definitely we have to keep an eye on what is going on nearby our confined space and overhead crane lifts that would be another hazard external so two types of hazards internal and external so both need to be tackled and you know uh, we surely have to plan you know some productive effective control measures proactively so because uh, nobody want to see any accident and uh, that is why it is important to be proactive you know. now now the most important thing is the control measures actually because uh, listing all hazards is our uh, regular job right like we have safety officers safety supervisors wprs we have CSE supervisors several engineers are also involved so what i mean is as a team we can easily identify several hazards but the point is if you have a big list of hazards but no controls what's the benefit so make sure you know whatever hazards you identified parallel on the other side opposite side you surely have to ensure the proper effective control measures are there let's take an example first of all uh, do not store inside the space what we should not store flammable or combustible materials we should not store inside the confined space and then compressed gas cylinders especially i call them tickling bomb as well sources of ignition uh, follow hot work permit rules and equipment shall meet electrical classification for the area and uh, most importantly fire protection equipment available and also ground air movers to prevent static buildup few more control measures examples like electric shock a ground force circuit interrupter gfci on tools and equipment and ul underwriters laboratories list or fm approved equipment like factory mutual approved equipment code protection is critically important to understand and power failure resulting in loss of inside lightning should also be controlled enough now how are we going to prepare actually to tackle our confined space projects and all that the number one uh, step is the preparation right um, like after putting some precautions the right ways to go and prepare and for preparation the number one process is the drain you have to drain drain what the hazardous materials nitrogen and after the drain we i hope you remember in the third lecture we studied you know after the drain you can go for cleaning might be water wash might be staining as well otherwise nitrogen and for nitrogen or uh, like for purging we use nitrogen and cleaning me could be water wash could be staining isolate and isolate mean you know, we can use lock up tagger and i hope you remember i mentioned in the third lecture that uh, blinding and disconnection these two methods are acceptable for confined space isolation 
few more examples of controls ventilation could be mechanical supply position of equipment is important ground equipment and also cooling exhaust ventilation natural ventilation these are some of the uh, control measures examples of ventilation and also examples of gases that to be monitored and uh, minimum four elements uh, surely we have to monitor especially the oxygen level and uh, let me repeat uh, below 19.5 percent as per osha usa and uh, uh, below 20 percent as per saudi Aramco, we have to use uh, this cover i mean because ideally it's not acceptable now 23.5 percent or above again you know it's not acceptable so no entry no work so what is the normal range 20 to 23.5 percent as per Saudi Aramco and 19.5 percent to 23.5 percent as per uh, OSHA regulations another point is H2S ideal it should be 0 ppm but if it is uh, unavoidable somewhat uh, below 10 ppm we can work 8 hours without uh, scuba even but sometimes a ranko will not take the risk or the client will not take the risk because might be they're gonna think this is just an acceleration point you know because might be the starting point is zero or one ppm but later on suddenly it is accelerating because of so many other factors you know. and uh, above 10 ppm scuba is mandatory up to 20 ppm but after 20 ppm no entry and high dlh of h2s immediately dangerous to life or health is 100 ppm and what is lel uh, that should also be measured lower explosive limit ideally it should be zero percent but uh, uh, especially the lel have to be zero percent if you are uh, going for hot work but uh, if it is a uh, cold work then below five percent below 5% you can do cold work without scuba but 5% to 10% LEA we surely have to use scuba and taking some other precautions you know but 10% or above no entry even against LEA now carbon monoxide ideally again 0 ppm much better but if it is unavoidable below 35 ppm we can work for 8 hours uh, it's kind of a TLV value and or PEL per visible exposure limit and on the other side 35 ppm to 1000 ppm uh, we need cover we need to take some approvals and further permissions or kind of uh, precautions as well but uh, 1000 ppm to onward no entry and frequency of testing uh, before first entry we have to conduct gas testing and uh, and then after the breaks and condition change or periodic intervals after every two hours few more control measures uh, initial gases with ventilation shutdown and acceptable entry working conditions must be there continuous monitoring when required as per the nature of your project i hope you remember in previous lectures i have clearly mentioned the continuous monitoring of uh, the atmosphere is also important you know. that is why and it must, it must be monitored through authorized gas tester or must have some fixed gas detection uh, detectors as well you know evacuation of the space no gas test limit like identify gases to be sampled conduct gases from outside the entry point that's that's pretty technical point you know conduct gases from outside entry point that means not going inside we, we must have to have uh, some tools with our uh, authorized gas tester you know he must be uh familiar how to perform gas testing now verify if uh, conditions are acceptable to enter and use proper pps to enter space and conduct gas tests within the space as well and most importantly make sure you know you follow this table like combustible gases any reading above zero percent earlier no hot work allowed five to ten percent yes. Breathing apparatus is important and then 10 percent LDL or above no work. Now hydrogen sulfide 10 ppm or above breathing apparatus must be used 10 to 100 ppm deviant head must sign and 100 ppm or above no work.
and most importantly oxygen less than 20% as per Saudi Rampo and as per OSHA 19.5% so breathing apparatus must be used as division head must sign the permit as well so about 23.5% no work allowed carbon monoxide 35 ppm to 1000 ppm breathing apparatus must be used 1000 ppm or above no confined space entry allowed now important limits to know like breathing apparatus shall be continuously worn if uh, oxygen is less than 20 percent flammable gases are at about five percent or less than 100 percent sorry 10 percent carbon monoxide is at or about 35 ppm or less than 1000 ppm we need breathing apparatus could be scuba saba or you know h2s is at or above 10 ppm and less than 100 ppm other toxic gases as per their dlv or at or below ideal h level the confined space entry is not permitted if atmosphere is like if we take an example of oxygen above 23.5 percent if that level of oxygen is there no entry is permitted same way if we talk about the flammable gases like LEL at or above 10 percent again no entry no work carbon monoxide is at or above 1000 ppm no entry no work h2s is at or above 100 ppm because 100 ppm that is why it is ideal edge immediately dangerous to life or there life or health okay other toxic gases are above their ideal edge level now what ppms we have to use for confined space quite common uh, we must have self-contained breathing apparatus or supplied air breathing apparatus. We call it scuba or saba. Air purifying cartridge, respirator. You look at the picture, you know, because one picture is more louder than words. So, coveralls, FRC, safety helmet, eye and face protection. Your safety, your life, your responsibility actually. Because a ramp is supporting, client is all the way. Uh, providing some resources and supporting you your company management they are also providing you some services you know to support you and to keep you safe on the other side HR admin uh, HSC quality all our services departments even you know uh, some others actually but they are serving you just to keep you safe so make sure you also realize your safety your responsibility as well now safety shoes or boots gloves and full body harness will land here for rescue so to avoid from any uh, kind of a fall protection actually issue what is the entry requirement make sure the csc permit is issued control excess we must have to use you know the standby man and also the area need to be barricaded one point entry from all four sides if uh, two three entries are entry points are there so more uh, uh, standby man we required for each entry and exit whatever we are using make sure we have separate standby man here record entry and exit of the personnel uh, we must have to have a csc lock sheet conduct atmosphere gas testing and perform the required work if you are you know like before performing the work look at how many things how many safety regulations we need to follow then once all is done now this is a time to perform the required work safely and once your job is done and during the job even uh, the communication is important especially face to face could be verbal hand signals rope system like one touch one touch means can be okay if it is okay to answer and two tugs means give me rope that i need to go further or three tug take up row i'm coming back or four tugs uh, means uh, help i need help kind of emergency so we call it both method otherwise there is another one uh radius like or csc log sheet like login and out sheet these are communication methods how the confined space entry log looks like you know the work permit number page unit location standby man batch number confined space you know the name of the person you need to mention and batch number you truly have to sign and date time in time out and job assignment what exactly you are performing you know for this particular uh, 
uh, for this particular confined space what exactly you are going to do what is the reason why you are going inside so clear clear cut you know the reason have to be mentioned and every individual is responsible to fill it i repeat again everyone whoever is going as per the csc plan or part of the project make sure he is signing this uh, uh, entry log sheet if he's going inside stop work first of all make sure there is a reason to stop work it's not like uh, you are a wpr or you are a safety manager or you are a safety supervisor so immediately you will stop because of any uh, non-technical reason actually so because once you are stopping the work it's a heavy cost it's a heavy cost every second at a project is very much important so you you have to be uh, careful you know and there must be some logical technical reasons behind when you stop work actually and procedures of course so once you stop work there must be again you know uh, following the procedure for re-entry even after the breaks or emergency conditions etc then atmosphere testing requirements you need to follow emergency response is uh, quite clear like prepare for rescue proactively that is why the standard uh, rescue team is important for especially you know the rescue team and equipment availability and department and site specific procedures have to be followed now team awareness and knowledge the right person for the right job team awareness and knowledge we can't ignore these two important points here and training and rescue drills because practice makes them imperfect so the more drills you have that means your emergency responders are uh, practically more sound actually and never attempt a rescue unless you are trained and equipped. Now, atmosphere during the rescue were considered to be immediately dangerous for life or health, ideal age. And standby men do not rescue. We have to remember, standby men do not rescue. Notifies the emergency team and the CSC supervisor. Return to operation once job is done. Now, you know, return to operation means account uh, for all entrants like head count. I mean, don't leave anyone to be inside. And on the other side, you know, remove tools and equipment, close and seal manuals and flanges, all walls back to operation mode, and remove isolation and load. -load. And please don't forget any isolated point because uh, the soil and gas industry so make sure you remove all isolations and loto and that is why sometimes it's better to prepare a list of locations so where you have placed uh, locks and tags and how many isolations are done and uh, how many points are disconnected and how many blinds you have placed you know the blinds locations also are important to note down and accordingly you have to remove your isolation and the lock of tiger hand out equipment and use checklist so that was uh, all about lecture number four of confined space entry i hope uh, it will be beneficial for all of you you can watch uh, again and again and make sure you understand all our technical points and the sequence is uh, pretty important you know consider you are the business owner and you got a project from Saudi Aramco or uh, maybe any any construction brand is giving you the project and there are some confined spaces so how are you going to handle you know the projects are in the confined spaces so what would be your first step second step third fourth so these uh, you know this lecture number four would definitely give you plenty of information how you can identify the hazards and uh, what is what are the best methods to control them actually okay guys i hope uh, uh, this just a short review like we started from what is confined space okay what is confined space entry and what is confined space so with i hope you remember any place which is not designed for human occupancy would be considered a confined space 
have limited exit uh, and entry and also uh, possibility of uh, severe health and safety hazards, toxic environment and uh, what is confined space entry, any part of the body, any part of the body, you know, would be considered that confined space entry is there and also the, uh, the periods of time, you know, all periods of time need to be recorded. That is why we have CSE log sheet. Then in the second part, we discuss, you know, the responsibilities, the responsibilities of issuers and receivers. Uh, you know, also we discuss the responsibilities of management, uh, the confined space entry supervisor, you know, a lot of responsibilities uh, CSC supervisor have to play with. And on the other side, uh, uh, standby man and other important gentlemen, you know, at the project. So also we discuss the entrant, how the entrant have to play their role. And uh, according to the project nature, you might get uh, fire watchers, uh, you know, uh, that's also be required if hot work is there. Authorized gas tester should also be the requirement. And on the other side, maybe a safety officer, maybe some other engineers, maybe some rigger, you know, I hope you got the point. So according to the nature of your project, you need to make sure the right team is there. And in the third element, we discuss why planning is important and uh, what are the elements of the uh, uh, CSE plan. And uh, this CSE plan, uh, like pre-entry preparation, how we're going to do is, and uh, before entry, what we have to do is. So we, we discuss in detail all those steps. And most importantly, in the number four uh, lecture, of which is done today, uh, like how are we going to identify all the hazards associated to confined spaces and what are the best controls you know we can implement and ultimately the goal is zero accident zero harm to the environment zero damage to the properties you know the company properties or assets you know and uh, of course everything we can regain everything we can uh, get again but to be very honest the life gone is gone forever one life gone is gone forever so we have to be very much careful uh, to avoid uh, any sort of fatalities and uh, ensure zero accident club inshallah within your project and your success stories as a, a safety leader like the more projects you have where zero accident is there of course your brand would will, would also be brilliant inshallah in the market so this is how you boom up as a professional and enhance your brand and this is how you start earning and uh, this training is uh, sometimes I say uh, we don't need safety uh, team members if complicated technical processes are there or if uh, such confined spaces are not there so uh, you are required as a safety leader because uh, you have to be the lifesaver safety is no doubt everyone's responsibility but you as a leader have to make sure that everyone understand proper induction is being given you are the one making sure the documentation is well in place in being implemented all regulations are being followed you are the one going to inspect several areas same like CSC supervisor even though they are the part of operation team but uh, on the other side uh, as a services team you as a safety leaders have to support all business functions you know or the processes of your projects I hope uh, this video, this lecture would also be very much beneficial for all of you. Thank you very much. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.